So what comes in your mind when you hear the term cloning? If you're like me, then you might be thinking of the clone warriors from the Star Wars movie, right? Now let me tell you that it's not only clone warriors, but cloning could be done for anything, such as DNA. There could be clones of DNA, there could be clones of cell, there could be even clones of this cat. In fact, the identical twins are clone of each other. That simply means clone are exactly similar things, right? Now the question is, is it possible to make a clone of an animal? Sounds pretty sci-fi, right? And it turns out it is possible and it was possible because in 1996, there was an experiment by Prof. Keith Campbell and Ian Wilmot. And the experiment took place in the Roslyn Institute, Scotland. And they cloned Dolly. So introducing Dolly the sheep. So why Dolly is so special? It turns out Dolly is actually a clone of a Finn Dorset E. Now, Dolly the sheep was pretty popular. Even still now, she is pretty popular. Because she was fertile, she can give rise to offsprings, and she was exactly same to his mother, to her mother, um, in terms of genetic makeup. So let us try to understand that how Dolly was created. So here is the mother of Dolly, who is a Finn Dorset E. Now from Dolly's mother, scientists took the other cells, which is the skin cells from the mammary gland. Then from a Scottish blackfish, blackface E, they took the egg cells. So the Scottish black, blackface E worked like an egg donor. Now, they cultured the somatic cells from the fin dorset and this somatic cell culture would be used later on. But from the Scottish blackfish E egg, they took out the nucleus with the help of a pipette. And these eggs now become enucleated. So note that there would be no genetic material of Scottish blackfish E in these um, enucleated egg. Now, they use electric shock to fuse these two cell types, the somatic cell and these egg cells coming from the black faced E. Now there would be a hybrid cell type. Notice that in this hybrid cell type, the nucleus or the genetic material would be totally similar to the somatic cell donor, that means the Queen Dorset, whereas the cytoplasmic material would be a mix up between the two. Now these cells would ultimately form an embryo and they would de de uh, develop gradually. Now when the embryo reach a blastocyst stage, it is ready to be implanted to a surrogate mother. In this case, it is implanted to a Sc Scottish blackface E. And when the progeny was born, surprisingly enough, the progeny was exactly similarly looking like the Finn Dorset E. And they call it the dolly. Dolly was the name given to these newborn lamb. Now dolly was the clone of Finn Dorset E. Let me remind you, this Finn Dorset E work like a somatic cell donor. So they are pretty much similar in terms of their genetic makeup, right? Now dolly was fully viable when dolly grew up like her mother. She gave rise to Bonnie. Bonnie was the progeny of Dolly and again Bonnie was exactly similar to Dolly and yep so Bonnie was born out of Dolly so Dolly was fully viable but eventually Dolly died. Now let me tell you that cloning can bring industrial revolution so let us talk about the plus and negative point of cloning so let's think of think from the industrial point of view. So let us understand that we have a cow farm and these cows are used for milk or meat purposes. So let's say there is a cow which gives a very good quality of milk and very healthy so it's a good source of meat as well. So this cow is a star of the farm. We wish that if we have multiple of these cows then it would be really beneficial for the farm 
industry, right? Or the meat industry. So in theory, we can generate the clones of these star cow. And that would give us optimal quality meat and milk. Imagine how beneficial it would be for the meat industry or the dairy industry, right? But there are ethical concerns. In fact, scientists tried cloning in cows and also in pigs, keeping these things in mind. Obviously, the cloning was successful, the progeny was born, but due to some unknown re reason, these progeny were more susceptible to infections and they are dying. So it was expected that they would lower the cost of farming and they would really give rise to optimum quality of meat and milk at low cost, but their maintenance was way higher. So still it's a problem. Now, while scientists were cloning cats, some dramatic came out of that. So this is a calico cat which was cloned and her clone was genetically exactly similar but look at her coat color. So identical DNA but not non-identical cats. How that is possible? That means even if two organisms have exactly similar genetic makeup, they might have differences and these differences might occur at epigenetic level beyond genes, right? So clones might not be exactly similar. Now let us imagine the problem of cloning and let us try to understand. So here is a pig population. Different colors represent different genetic makeup of these pig, though they are same species, but they could be having different gene expression profiles and that makes them a bit different from each other. Now, if you start doing cloning over a time period, there would be exact similar genetic makeup in a population. For a population, it's very bad because it causes inbreed depression or it increases the risk of genetic disease. That really questions the um, plus point of cloning because it ultimately it do not create genetic diversity or it reduces the genetic diversity which is very bad from an evolutionary point of view. So, but there could be benefits. Think about the endangered animals. We know Royal Bengal tigers are endangered. Their numbers are very less. One horned rhinoceros, polar bears, elephant, they're all endangered. Only few thousands of them. If we don't take care of them, we, if we don't conserve them, then they would be totally extinct from this earth, right? And they would be only left in the pages of books. So using cloning method, we can increase their population. Let us imagine this is a Royal Bengal tiger. We can make a clone of these Royal Bengal tiger. And that is how we can really increase their population, which is now decreasing. You know, in a small population, there are problems like genetic drift and allelic fixation, etc. So we can rescue them from that small population. But again, when the population would grow, it would be a homogeneous population of a tiger. That would create a huge problem that would in turn increase the risk of genetic disease. So, well, this problem is pretty, pretty complicated. Even scientists tried these cloning method to make human organs inside a pig, but that eventually did not lead to success. Now, whether cloning is good or whether cloning is bad, it is a alarming research ethical topic. And I can't really comment more on that part. But anyway, in this video, we looked at what is cloning, how Dolly was made, possible benefits of cloning and possible downsides of cloning. That pretty much summarized this topic. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And you can support me and my channel in Patreon. Be my Patreon, guys. And you can always access my course in Unacademy, which is India's biggest learning platform. Using my code AP10, you can get 10% discount on my courses. Thank you, guys.